Alright, so let's get this off the jack stands and lean them over and let that oil flow. And then we'll top it off one more time. So I just lean it like this and put some weight on it. Let that oil run down to this side because it's even with the bottom of the axle tube. So it doesn't take, I'm leaning it more than it has to, than I have to probably. But let that oil come down the axle tube and fill in the hub. Then we'll lean it the other way and do the same thing and whatever is overflowing this hub will run back down that way and once all the hubs are full then we can top the center off and we should be good to go for the final time before she goes back under the truck. typical me fashion especially in doing something that I don't do on a regular basis I uh, got this under last night and got tired rolling it under here and thinking that I was gonna have to come up with some kind of confabulation to get one wheel off the ground and free this up where this trunk would not want to roll with the tire so I got the axle pretty well spotted where it needs to be but as you can see in the video or hopefully you can see in the video it's um <laughs> the chunk is the the diff angle is a little off let's put it that way so uh anyhow i got uh got our jack stand right here ready to go and we'll see how much of a mess this makes but in thinking about it I was like well you know if you just turn the diff with the with a bar it should come down instead of having to do anything kind of crazy with the axles to get get it freed up so we're just gonna go ahead and turn it till it sits on the jack stand 
So the reason I wanted to show that to you is in typical fashion, especially with stuff that I got to do that I don't do regular. I kind of overthink things and put the cart before the horse. So here we are, we got the damn, uh, the diff back down where it needs to be and we can start hooking stuff up and get everything ready to roll <clears throat> so like i said sometimes you got to back away from a situation and roll it around in your mind a little bit and the situation will usually present itself <clears throat> all right i gotta get some tools pull these shocks off because these are shot and then i can start getting things lined up again i don't have u-bolts this morning it's sunday so i have to get those tomorrow but what i really would like to do let me grab the camera is let me get this screen popped up is get that leaf spring sitting on this perch and that way the truck is off the jack stands and everything's kind of at a safe non-elevated situation so what I got to do is attach the uh, mercy brake cables. I need to attach the sway bar to the sway bar links. These oil shocks, which the bushings are shot, need to come off. Um, you can see, let me show you right here because that's a damn problem. This is the vent hose. And in a little bit of time it's been off, the dirt daubers have already put a plug in it. So I have the, uh, a little plug on the vent tube and I already stuck a screwdriver all the way through it to make sure the vent tube is not clogged up with dirt dauber stuff. So once this comes down, I can plug this vent hose into the nipple and blow through it with some compressed air, make sure that's all good. The blue rag up there has the brake line and similar stuff on the other side. So, huh. All right, well, talking about it ain't gonna get it done. All right, as y'all can see right here, the axle needs to go just a smidge to the left to line up. I don't have much wiggle on those springs. And rather than jack the axle up to the spring, I'd rather lower it down. So I got out my custom, uh, all factory uh <laughs> axle sliding tool so we're going to try this and see if we can slide this axle about an inch and a half to the left all right let's see if our smidge adjuster will adjust this axle inch and a half to the left all right let's try it close on that side we'll go ahead even a blind hog finds an acorn every now and then all right let's get uh, set up and see if we can lower this bed all right I got y'all set up here I'm gonna put it on uh, on time lapse it might be some cursing involved so we're gonna jack it lift it up drop the jack stands out and ease it down see if we can center that uh, depends on the purchase so that might take a few tries i'm figured instead of y'all watching all of that i'll put it on time lapse
if y'all can make this out you can see we're sitting on the perch on the front but not on the back the pin is in the hole on both sides so that means that the axle needs to roll forward a little bit and our jack stand has that compromised so now I got to go jack that up and get that out of the way and then she should settle flat and I don't know if y'all can make out the other side if that's coming out but it's the same situation front of the leaf springs on the perch pins in the hole and the back is just a little bit off so let's get that done all right well, it's back away in the morning we said all right to start the video which seems to be damn near a requirement on a youtube video <laughs> we y'all don't understand because what y'all watching what we shoot is two different animals and a lot of times we're picking up where we left off and stuff this drive shaft and u-joint situation has got to get put back together because um this thing's in the way everywhere i need to put my head the damn uh, drive shafts in the way so first things first we're gonna button that up and that's not gonna be a bad deal we're gonna take all of this off now i have the front chalked in front and back which is the way it's been since we started this so i'm gonna pick this up and untape it try not to lose any of the cups there we go all right good deal and we got our we got the stick shift in negative so we're gonna be able to rotate her and should be able to stretch her out a little bit Now, hopefully, I don't drop the damn thing on my head. Should stay put, though. On, uh, gonna put a little blue Loctite, and I may not be able to get that on screen, but we're gonna put blue Loctite on all four uh, bolts. All right, got Loctite on the bolts. I guess we'll start on the bottom. to do this with the eyes on the end of my fingers I can't see anything but that's all right we used to work in half blind anyway a lot of these projects you jump on and you're doing stuff and you got to wait on parts or another little project pops up and so you're doing it kind of here and there and it's hard to you know hard to remember where everything went when if you take it apart this morning and put it back this evening, that's fine. But a lot of times, you take it apart and a week or two later, you're getting back to it and it's kind of hard to remember. So I got some of the uh, park brake lines, you know, all these emergency brake lines taken loose. So before I get to torquing the big U-bolts down and doing all of that, final business we're gonna get all of this little stuff wrapped up all right well I couldn't find torque specs on either any of the three torque sheets I got for the u-bolts so this is my headache we did the old homemade torque wrench and gave them a couple of ugly doogas we'll call that good all right this bolt was kind of stuck the other day so we're gonna get this. I don't know how I put that on by hand. And maybe I'll ran it up with the impact a little bit. I don't know. All right. <clears throat> oh, 
Oh, jeez. All right, we got that. Let's buzz this shock off. Up, oh, pull some more holes. Sorry for the noise. Cost of doing business. All right. This is trash. Okay, now this I looked at on my other truck and we're going to have to get it underneath uh, this, I think. Yeah. Yep, all right. And I'm gonna take this out the way. So you got this little ziggy zag J and there's a hole in the brake line right there. So that's how that stabs in. Let me slide this holder out the way. Let me see if I can get up close for you guys to see. And the other one has like a D. Uh, So that's it, and we're gonna run the cable in the, pull the spring back, and then this, we're gonna shove in there. All right, I just realized I didn't get any of that crap on video. Look at the camera, fool. Okay, so we have the J-hook, push the spring back, run the cable in here, and then the uh, end of the, ca of the cable casing has some little spring-loaded quick connects. You just slide it in there and pop it in. And then this, uh, this is gonna just go to right there. And we're gonna tighten that up. And then I gotta switch sides and move the camera. So let me get that done and I'll get back with you. All right, so if y'all remember, on the very top of the rear end of this plate, your brake line, it sits this way. This clips underneath the brake line, there's a bolt that goes there and it just holds the brake cable so I'm gonna get that on and I can't really get a good spot if I put my head there y'all can't see I'll put y'all there I can't work so let me stick that on there and we'll get uh, on to the other side okay there's a park brake thing that I missed because the camera angle wasn't worth a damn so with one hand let me see if I can get this in there so that's gonna stab through there pull your spring back and get the cable in the groove like that and you line up this end and get a little further in here and give her a little oh hell and of course this one don't want to work let me put the camera down Sorry for all this moving. <clears throat> all right. There it is. All right, so that's how that hooks. All right, so we already got the plug back in. And we got one strap. I'm gonna leave that for right now. Uh, the other one broke off, of course. And we got our plate done on the top. So instead of y'all hearing that impact, I'm gonna go ahead and pull this shock off. And then I have to go through, tighten up, or um, uh, sway bar drop link right here, sway bar link. And I have a couple of these um parking brake hold down mounts to tighten up then we'll hook the park brake back all right we got our little hold down brackets done and this is where the two and the one i call it um park brake thing is so let's see if i can get that on there so we're just gonna hook that and we got to figure out I gotta pull some slack or 
I see. I don't think. I'm just trying to use this to pull on them a little bit. All right, I'm gonna have to two hand this because I'm gonna have to pull from the front and try and get that on there, but it's just going in this fork right here. So we got them hooked. I just hooked the top and then I had a little slack I could pull from the front to hook the bottom. So that's done and we gotta move again and get in the back. Guys, so here is the brake, the rubber brake hose. Now this sticks through a bulkhead fitting and on this groove is a little keeper. Uh, okay so here we are on the back side the rear end this is the rubber brake line that feeds both sides in this little block i'll show you where it goes in just a second but just to show you how it goes you got a metal brake line screws into there this sticks through a bulkhead and this groove right there gets this little clamp or retainer, I guess you could call it. So all of that is going. Let me see if I can get my head in here. All right, all of that, this hole right here is where we're gonna be sticking through, okay? And the pin's gonna go on, the retainer's gonna go on the top and clip it. And up in this uh, rag, is a brake line soaked brake line coming from the front so what i would do is i would take the hose we're going to stick it through the hole start the brake line in there and run it down hand tight so we know we got the brake line in there and that way we can have the flexibility to wiggle the hose once we got that in there then we can go ahead and put the retainer and snug the brake line bolt down and then the other thing i wanted to show you guys uh, you know, the nipple is right here on the edge of this brake block. And as you can see, the dirt daubers have already made a home in this hose. Now, I put this hose on here ages ago. I'm going to take a little screwdriver and clean this out. And then I'm going to have a, um, uh, I got a blow gun. I'm going to blow that out. I already know that the nipple is clear and I got it capped. So nothing got in there already. So once that's blown and clear, I can put that on the rear end and know that we got a good vent and a side note to this you, you know all these trucks are 20 years old let me get my screen back up so these hoses as a as a all of the hoses are getting old and dry and you know it, it moves up and down as the axle goes up and down so they usually break right here next to the top of the nipple and then hangs there and that's how i think the water got into here but my side note is, if you don't check this from time to time and make sure that this is clear and the nipple's clear and blow some air through it, you know, whatever you need to do to check it out. But if you notice, um, down here on the bottom of the brake rotor, if you get a, a gear oil leak on both sides at the same time, that's probably not a seal failure. That's probably going to be this line right here again uh stopped up at the end or you know with dirt daubers or something because that's the that allows air pressure as the oil heats up air pressure can vent to the atmosphere and when it cools down it can come and go and if it can't vent out it's going to build up pressure and if it can't break through whatever's plugging this line it's going to push oil out the seals and make you a bloody mess on both sides um which is all kind of fun but just a side note on that in case y'all want to get into it now i'm not going to be able to get a camera in here because i'm going to be too busy getting myself all full of brake fluid so uh i'll show you this when i'm done all right so through the bulkhead we got our little clip and we've snugged up our upper brake line actually the brake line will reach down through the hole and you can get it started real good and then shove everything back up and tighten it up and we got our vent line on our nipple and we blew air through it and cleaned it with a screwdriver so i think i'm going to put a little bit of loom maybe on here because it's kind of wanting to rub on that gas tank 
and um, that should be that and we'll get on to these bolts all right so we're getting ready to torque our u-bolts which are just like the old ones here we got here and uh, last time I went to torque them they torque at 325 foot-pounds my torque wrench goes to 250 and my buddy's nicer torque wrench goes to 250 and last time I did one of these rear end swaps a few years ago I ended up uh, just setting up putting an extension on the on the pry bar I mean on the uh, breaker bar and just went at it and gave it all we got and called it good and I could probably run it up with the Milwaukee impact but that's gonna still not gonna give me a good thing so we're gonna snuggle we're gonna run them up with the impact and uh, probably the air impact and then we'll come back with this setup now what we got here is a torque multiplier which is a planetary gear setup so torque wrench is gonna go in a half inch drive here the three quarter inch drive I have an adapter for and we're gonna step it back to our deep socket um, inch and a sixteenth I believe it is and you just set this handle up against something and you work your uh, torque wrench now what this is is a four to one so since we have 325 foot-pounds you divide that by four I believe that's what 80 81 and a quarter so basically 81 foot pounds on we'll set the torque wrench for 81 and when it clicks this is multiplied it by four so that'll give us three and a quarter so that's how we're going to do that uh, let me get the camera set up and we'll get on it all right i'm going to run this on time lapse because i know y'all don't really want to hear all this noise from this impact we're just going to run them up snug with the uh, impact and then come back with the multiplier. Alright, well here goes. First try at this torque multiplier business. So we're going to see how wore out we can get these arms today. So we're going to let this rest against the tire. We're about to get ourselves under here. Uh, yeah, let me get this adjusted right. Uh, it's going to go a good bit slower. It may feel like it's not doing anything, I guess. Alright. Gotta get all the way over there. Alright, dude, click. I don't understand why. There it is. Alright, why is this damn thing not ratcheting right? There it is. Get away from this gas tank. Alright, God dog it. Get on there. This is all kind of fun. We're going to switch sides. Oh, come on. Damn it, get on there. I think I'm gonna have 
have to try and get that from the other side. All right, well, we're fighting this torque multiplier, and the problem I'm having, I had to put this thing up on 4x4s, give me a little space, and we're going to hit them with the Milwaukee. The deep socket I have is only catching maybe half an inch when you start and maybe a quarter inch of a nut by the time you get them tight and to try and balance all of this gymnastics crap of the torque multiplier and be able to just barely keep it on is too much bullshit and it's taking too much time so I'd have to come back and cut all of these you know maybe a half inch off where the socket would sit all the way deep and maybe when we tighten it up uh, it was good. we're gonna drive it hundred so miles and retorque so maybe we'll deal with it then but for right now, uh, we're gonna put some ooga doogas on this thing and, and then we'll come back and retorque it and I'll try and get that on video when that happens. Let me uh, put this on time lapse and that way y'all don't get your ears blown out by the uh, impact. All right, we got our master cylinders full and it's time to Trying to bleed the brakes. I'm just gonna make sure that that's loose. I'm gonna put my little air sucker boot on. Now I'm gonna suck some stuff through here. So I'm gonna put y'all on time lapse because that's quite a bit loud too. I don't think y'all wanna listen to all that, but we're just basically using this. Where is it? Uh, let me get a better picture of it. Uh, this little brake bleeder, little Harbor Freight brake ble break bleeder. I'm getting tired. I can't even talk anymore. So we're gonna be pulling a vacuum on this, cracking that, and letting it pull through the line till we stop seeing bubbles in the in the tube. And since probably most of the rear line bled out while this truck was sitting up during the rear end conversion. Uh, this first pull is going to take a lot of fluid because we have to fill up the line from the front to the back and then fill up this side. The other side should take quite a bit less, but you got to make sure that you check every now and then and get the uh, top off your fluid on the master cylinder. So there's the bubbles coming out. And once you quit getting bubbles, you pretty much got it all. Sometimes you got to put a little grease around the threads of the bleeder nipple to, so it's not sucking air from the threads. But, but right now we're gonna we're just gonna go with this for right now. All right, my battery's getting ready to die. I'm gonna uh, catch on on the other side. All right, just wanted to give y'all another little shot of the brake bleeder. Um, again, this one came from Harbor Freight. Uh, I don't particularly care which one they are. They they all particularly do the same thing. I didn't know how much of an accurate shot I got because it kind of zoomed in. But we got uh, battery going dead again, so uh or again it, i never did change it yet but basically all we did was pull a vacuum switch sides and pull a good bleed shut it off check your fluid and since we're just doing the back you can kind of see where the fluid level is so um and you'll see some you know some little minuscule bubbles when you first start pulling with these things you'll see some big bubbles and um that's the air you're getting out the line. Most of the time when you get to the end where you start to see just little fizzy looking bubbles right here. And then of course they'll get bigger as they travel through the line. That's usually just um, air sucking around the threads of the bleeder. 
but you can still keep pulling vacuum because that air is going to suck around the threads and then just get sucked right back out so anyhow uh master cylinders topped off everything is as torqued as it's going to get for right now so i think it's time to clean off this mess and get us a a, a little test drive action and then i have some i got to get my mud flaps back on but that's probably going to be uh tomorrow because i'm a, i got a bent rod on one of them i got to straighten out so i'm gonna take this one for a test ride and see so that's uh the joy and pleasure and fun of a rear end conversion and swap on a f450 appreciate y'all watching if y'all have any comments uh you know if you liked it or if you got any suggestions for me on easier ways to do things or pointers or you need a little suggestion just hit me up in the comment section and we'll see y'all on the next one and uh i'm not really sure what that's gonna be right now but we'll see you on the next one thanks for watching